In this video, we want to look at how to uh, multiply uh, polar vectors. So here we have a polar vector R1, or it has a magnitude of R1, and this makes an angle of theta1 with the x-axis, and then another vector, this has a magnitude of R2, and that makes an angle of theta2 with the x-axis. So again, two polar vectors, R1, that's the magnitude, with an angle of theta1, and R2, magnitude R2, that makes an angle of theta2 with the x-axis. Now, remember that this, R1, theta 1 our polar vector, if we want to express it in um, its rectangular Cartesian coordinates, that would be equal to its magnitude, and then the x component would be its magnitude times the cosine of theta 1, plus j and now we have its magnitude times the sine of theta 1. So the x component and the y component. With alternating currents, we just don't have a y axis as times j, j being the square root of negative 1. And we had discussed it, I think, back in uh, video number 71, why it's like that. But here what we're going to do is, as we did back in video number 71, in fact, we're going to make use of Euler's relationship that e to the j theta, again, j is the square root of negative 1. This is equal to the cosine of theta plus j times the sine of theta. Now, here in the exponent of e, theta has to be measured in radians. Here, it can be either in radians or degrees. But for this relationship to hold, the theta here has to be expressed in radians. But what this means is that r1 times the cosine of theta1 plus jr1 times the sine of theta1, we could simply write this as r1 e to the j theta 1. This would equal r1 times the cosine of theta 1 plus j times the sine of theta 1. So let's just write it like this. So here is another way that we can write this expression. Likewise, R2 e to the j theta 2 will equal R2 times the cosine of theta 2 plus r2 j times the sine of theta 2. We don't need this any longer. Well, now if we're going to multiply polar um, vectors together, expressing them in this form, we want to multiply these together. That was our goal. Multiply this polar vector times this polar vector. Well, now we see that we can rewrite the polar vectors in this form. So we want to multiply this together. R1 ej theta 1 times R2 ej theta 2. So that will equal R1 
times R2, multiplying these together, then we have E to the J theta 1 times E to the J theta 2. But this, here we're multiplying these two numbers together, but multiplying is the same thing as adding exponents. So we can write this as R1, R2, e to the j, theta 1 plus theta 2. And there we have it then. To multiply two different polar vectors together, all we have to do is multiply their magnitudes together and add their angles. So it's a very simple operation. Let's just take an example here. Now that we know what the rule is, I hope we have some insight as to why it works that way. Earlier, I think in the uh, video number 73, we multiplied 3 plus j4 and minus 6 plus j3. These are two complex numbers, but they could also be then uh, two vectors expressed in terms of their rectangular components. And when we multiplied it together, we ended up with minus 30 minus j times 15. Well, I think it was back in video number 72, this vector of rectangular coordinates, we re-expressed it in terms of polar coordinates. It was 5 with an angle of 53.1 degrees. And this one, we also found an expression for that as a polar coordinate back in video number 72. That was magnitude 6.7 and that had an angle of 153 four tenths degrees. So if we multiply these as polar vectors, it would be, simply be 5 times 6.7, that's 30 plus 3.5, that's 33.5. Add the angles together we ended up with 206 and a half degrees. That's all we have to do. Multiply this, add the angles, and then you've multiplied the two vectors together. And if you want, you can look at this polar form, express it in terms of its rectangular components, and you should get this answer. What we'll do for the rest of this video is consider the um, another problem that we did in the previous video where we had 3 plus j4 and we divided it by minus 6 plus j3. And then after some manipulation we found out this is equal to minus 2 divided by 15 minus 11 over 15 times j. Well, let's see how we would do this if they were expressed in their polar form. 3 plus j4, that is 5. Angle, 53.1 degrees. This, that is 6.7, angle 153, I think 4 tenths degrees. So now, to divide the two vectors, divide their magnitude, 5 divided by 6.7, we get about not quite 3 fourths, 0.74, and then we have 53.1 minus 
153 and 4 tenths. So for the angle, it is minus 100.3 degrees. And that's it. We've done the division. So just simply divide the magnitudes and subtract the angles. Now, that means then that this polar vector and this vector that we have in rectangular form, of course, they should be the same. They should be equivalent. So let's just take a couple of minutes and see if we can uh, convince ourselves that indeed that's true. So what would this vector, if we were to try to uh, sketch it out, what would it look like? Because we have this negative angle here to contend with. So let's see. When we are measuring the angle, we start at the positive x-axis and we go counterclockwise until we meet the vector. If it's a positive angle, if it's a negative angle, we start at the positive x-axis and we go clockwise. So here, this is telling us to go clockwise 103 tenths degrees. Well, this is 90 degrees here. So it would look something like this, magnitude 0.74. And this angle right here is 10.3 degrees. So we're going 90 plus 10.3. That's minus 100.3 degrees, magnitude 0.74. We want to know then, for this vector that's in the third quadrant, what is its y component and what is its x component. And we can see both of them are going to have negative values. We're going to the left of the origin, and then we're going down. And let's see if we can find out what they are. If this angle is 10.3 degrees, this angle here is 79 and 7 tenths degrees for that angle. So let's just draw this separately and make it bigger so it's not quite so cluttered. Angle 79.7 degrees, magnitude 0.74. So we have this, and then we have this. And we want to know this component, and we want to know this component, and this angle is 79 and 7 tenths degrees. This is the x component, of course. And this would be the y component both of them being negative, because this was to the left of the origin, and here we're going down. So the x component then, and this has a magnitude 0.74. So the x component, that will be 0.74 times the cosine of that angle with the negative sign before it. So x equals minus 0.74 times the cosine of 79 7 tenths degrees. And y component, this times the sine of that with a negative sign before it, we're going down. So it's minus 0.74 times the sine of 79 7 tenths degrees. And let's see, I think this right here is 0.178 when you look this up on a table of values. We didn't do it on a calculator, we looked it up on a table. We got 0.178 for that cosine, and for the sine, that's 0.98. 
So we get x, 0.178 times minus 0.74, we get point minus 0.13, and y, 0.98 times minus 0.74, I think we get minus 0.725. So let's see. We're saying then that for this polar vector, it could be written in rectangular form as minus 0.13 minus this j 0.74. So this polar vector in rectangular coordinates gives us this expression right here. Now, before, in the last video, when we did the division the hard way, actually, leaving it in its rectangular expression, then we multiplied top and bottom by the complex conjugate of this, and we got this answer. So how does this minus 2 over 15 minus 11 over 15j, is that the same as minus 0.13 minus 0.725j? Um, here for 2 divided by 15, we do get 0.13, and 11 divided by 15, we got minus 0.73, I believe. So, very close. So anyway, that's just a demonstration then. If vectors are in polar form, though, it is much easier to multiply and divide them, because all we have to do, if we're dividing, divide the magnitudes, subtract the angles, and we're finished. Or if we're multiplying them, multiply the magnitudes, add the angles, and then the multiplication is taken care of. So I think that's it for this video. I believe this is video number 74 in our series on electrical circuit analysis. Um, the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org.